So the solar energy systems include various components, um, a lot of which is manufactured um, uh, out of the country and so are imported. Um, and there are some um, that are then manufactured locally. So some of the examples of this are, are the panels, the solar panels themselves, the inverters, the mounting, um, and finally the batteries. So panels are made up of glass, plastic, silicone, um, but to name a few components, but to turn the silicon into a form that can be used is an energy intensive process firstly. And then the silicon in its current form cannot really conduct electricity. So it has to be mixed uh, with elements such as phosphorus, boron, lead, cadmium, etc., in a process called doping. So what happens then is once these panels are used uh, and once it's reached its lifespan or once it's damaged, then what does one do to recycle the panels? Considering all of these potentially harmful substances included, what is that process and has it been successfully implemented within the country and how then uh, can we go further in terms of uh, establishing uh, recycling or uh, in, in endeavors in terms of these panels? So these are some of the questions that one has to ask or the solar sector needs to ask uh, in terms of EPR. And then coming to the inverters, which we know uh, obviously convert the direct country, current to or alternate, alternating current. So you've got capacitators, you've got switches, magnetic components. Are those recyclable? Is there an industry to recycle that within the country? Um, the mounting from what I know is mostly made up of aluminium. Um, because of its durability and how light it is. And so aluminium, I know, has an established recycling um, um, you know, process or uh, enterprises within the country, and hence uh, those are envisaged to be easily recyclable. The batteries, let's come to the batteries. So there are different forms of batteries, but for the most part, Lithium ion batteries or lithium batteries are used to store the electricity that generated from the whole solar installation. And there are various forms of lithium batteries. But South Africa, as we know, does not have lithium. So hence, we don't produce these batteries locally. All of these batteries are imported. And those batteries can last from anything from 5 to 15 years. And what we know is that there isn't a recycling uh, sector for lithium batteries in South Africa. And, and what we know is that it makes sense to recycle these because they have, uh, other than some of the, the, the dangerous substances um, or flammable substances within um, these uh, batteries, there are valuable components like uh, lithium itself, uh, cobalt, copper, nickel, to name but a few, which can, which has value, and so you know could be recycled. Um, so the question is then, how does one go about setting up a recycling sector for these batteries? And also, um, the department partnered with the uh, Green Fund, um, and we did a study back in 2015 about um, you know the the recycling of lithium ion batteries within the country. And bottom line is the country, uh, the, the, the paper, the research indicated that there is a viable um, industry or a potential industry that could be viable within the country. But then um, it, it will not be strictly recycling of lithium batteries as well. It's got to be other uh, substances as well. But that research needs to be taken forward um, um, as, as a sector. So. In manufacturing of components, the producers need to look carefully into resources utilized. So from an energy perspective, from a raw materials perspective, whether there's any water um, needed, etc. And like I've indicated before, producers must design their components for maximum recyclability so that post use, they can be refurbished for further use in the generation of um, solar energy or be repurposed for inclusion in another product or recycled into something completely different altogether. And the, the businesses which do not currently exist in the country would need to be set up in the near future because 
um, I think we are all aware that the country is moving towards more um, energy generation from the renewable sector and hence there is going to be a need for us to look carefully at the entire value chain within um, the solar uh, energy generation in order to find solutions uh, for the waste that is generated from, from this. So to conclude, um, local manufacturing and sourcing of raw materials must be encouraged when it comes to um, setting up uh, recycling ventures within the, the solar energy space. Let's look at batteries. I mean, is lithium batteries um, the only batteries that could be used? Is there nothing that is developed locally that could do the same, uh, you know, achieve the same storage that the lithium batteries can? These are things that need to be looked at. Skills development is something that needs to be looked at because if one has to um, uh, develop a recycling or refurbishment or, or down the, the uh, you know, uh, an existing, sorry, a, a new value chain in terms of this, then that skill must be transferred. Um, so in terms of the department itself, we have now set up, or as, as uh, Ntombi has talked about, we have um, submitted or published regulations for extended producer responsibility. We are now in the commenting phase of that. And um, once those comments have been incorporated or, or factored in, then we would publish those regulations for implementation. Um, additionally, uh, we have utilized Section 18 of the National Waste Management Act to do this. And we have targeted uh, or, or focused rather on three sectors right now. Um, that is the electrical and electronic equipment, lighting equipment, as well as paper and packaging. Uh, and those notices have been widely consulted on and we are in the final stages of having those uh, published for implementation. Now, uh, this is something that we want to explore um, for the solar or for the renewable sector as well. And Section 18 of the Act basically sets out the requirements of, the, of what needs to be factored into the EPR scheme. But how this will work, the machinations there will have to be determined by the sector itself. And the timing of this is also important because as I indicated, we've got three notices which are very close for, to publication uh, for implementation. And how this, those notices affect the current solar sector is that there are components from the solar energy sector that are already covered under the electrical and electronic EPR um, uh, notice. And until the solar energy sector develops its own schemes, these components will be covered under the current scheme once Minister has approved them. So what this means, <coughs> excuse me, um, is that producers within the solar space will have to register with that scheme until an EPR for solar energy becomes a reality. Um, and I think that is an important uh, aspect and there needs to be constant uh, communication between ourselves and the sector so that we could um, clarify any uh, questions that you have, any advice that you need, and we would then be able to um, help you um, go forward in this process.